limits at infinity. Here it is, gonna show you those. Uh, at negative infinity. So if we have negative infinity, uh, that means we are approaching the left side of our graph as far as we can possibly go. Well, it, thankfully they, they've graphed it for us right here, it's beautiful. Uh, if you could really zoom in, you could see that this guy is approaching zero, but never touching, but he's approaching zero. So the closer and closer we get to negative infinity, the answer is zero. Here's another way to see that if you don't have the graph. This exponent is a one, this exponent is a two. Um, if the numerator is less than the denominator in terms of exponents, um, it's gonna head towards zero. That's what it does. Uh, look at this one. This number two, the exponent is higher, here it is, three is bigger than two. Okay, so what happens? Well, well, if we, if we look at our graph, as we approach negative infinity, what's going on? This guy is approaching negative infinity. He's going further and further and further down as you keep going. Okay, so if our, if our exponent and our numerator is bigger than our exponent and our denominator. How did I erase that? What in the world? There we go. If our exponent and our numerator is bigger than our exponent and our denominator, then we're going to be approaching either negative infinity or positive infinity. It just depends on the graph. So we would need to plug it in, right? So the reason why this is negative infinity, come back here, is because as this x to the third gets bigger and bigger negative, it's going to stay negative whereas the denominator squared is going to be positive. So it's a huge negative number over a pretty big positive number. That's why it's negative infinity.